Year 4, The Rule of Locus. Locus posted, I propose that we each name one dwarf after ourselves when we end our reign and retire slash get demoted for gross negligence. I can do that retroactively for previous rulers if you think it's a good idea. First of Granite, 1054, Early Spring. I've been selected as the next interim ruler of this village of Boat Murdered, which is well on its way to becoming a grand fortress. In hostile lands such as these, security and provisions are my first and foremost concern. Although I was worried when I discovered that we had no military forces to speak of, an inspection of our trap systems reveals that they're sufficient to defeat any attacking force from inside or outside below a full-scale siege. I looked to wells as a possible route of invading vermin, but only found barrels of alcohol. As we only have a scattering of peasants to choose from, most of which seem to be pursuing their own professions, I will wait for new immigrants to draft for our army. In the meantime, weapons and armor must be forged. Personal Note My thoughts linger on the sinister herd of elephants I saw lurking across the river today, and I'm tempted to order the construction of a special catapult battery which overlooks their territory in order to train our siege operators. Unfortunately, such slaughter would surely agitate the many animal handlers who've taken upon themselves to capture and tame these monstrosities for reasons I cannot fathom. For now, there are more pressing matters to attend to. Provisions are not as high as I would like, especially with more immigrants coming soon. I've ordered some of our farm plots to be enlarged and ordered the planting of the year's first crops. Noting the need for copper ore, I surveyed the walls of the cave river and noted a small vein. I ordered a tunnel to be dug to the source, but work is so slow as we only have two miners, and one of them is resting to heal a very nasty-looking wounded left arm. I do not know what caused it. In fact, I'm noticing that several peasants and farmers are in similar shape. Success! Kulay Regunib, our legendary miner, has struck silver while digging into the malachite vein. As I received early warning that the cave river was flooding, I noticed that our current bridge is extremely unstable and dangerous in such a situation. Fortunately, the dwarves and animals on the bridge were not swept off when it hit, but we may not have such luck in the future. I've ordered a pair of small bridges be constructed upstream and downstream of the main walkway in such a way that they will not compromise the drawbridge function. An elven caravan has arrived, and their friendship with nature seems to have protected them from the grazing elephants. I do not know the state of our crowds and trade goods, but bins are being sent to the trade depot in preparation. We traded a talc ring for five berries. Personal note, I grow to hate elves more and more as time passes. Still somewhat low on food, I have ordered several elephants put up for slaughter. Immigrants, specifically 19 of them with a mayor, a mason's guildmaster, and a house fairite representative. Mayor Rawl Atir Lor Sith, personal note, I do not trust that name, has settled into the noble quarters and is already demanding seven fortress guards. I am drafting assorted peasants and mechanics to fulfill this and using the three sword dwarf immigrants as the first squad in our new army. A ban on exporting red spinel items has just been introduced by the mayor for some reason. What does he think our enemies are going to do? Stab us with jewels? I've had little sleep in the past two days and must retire for tonight. I have quite a bit of work to do in the upcoming seasons, mainly outfitting our soldiers with steel equipment, setting up improved magma crafting centers, and managing our food supply. I hope that the coming summer proves to be favorable to boat murdered. Keyboard Fox posted, Dude, we have five metric fucktons of prepared food. We're not low on food. Locust posted, Oh, prepared food. So these are some kind of dainty fancy pants dwarves that don't sit in the dark and gnaw on cold mushrooms? That seems undwarf like. Tourette Dog posted, it's dwarf bread, man. The cat peed on it, and it doubles as a lethal throwing weapon. Locust boasted. That makes sense. I bet it menaces with spikes of bread, too. First of Hematite, 1054, Early Summer. After being informed by the kitchen staff that we have a large stock of prepared meals, I'm not sure I understand the purpose of these, I have focused my attention mainly on our magma forging area. I'm ordering the construction of another magma smelter and bronze bars to be cast. 
The craft business was just interrupted by the withdrawal from society by Tosid Fire Abbey, who is unfortunately a novice glassmaker. Perhaps his mood has been caused by our lack of skilled and healthy miners who have not yet excavated space for a magma furnace. I've called off the malachite mining operations until this area has been completed. Meanwhile, I'm worried about the very unsafe construction of the halls near our magma forges. Rather than leaving occasional natural supports of living stone, the previous ruler has instead dug out the entirety of this wide hallway and built rather unstable-looking stone pillars here. I noticed a small lava flooding space around a pillar blocked by floodgates, which is presumably part of an emergency system to collapse the roof here, but even if a careless or angry dwarf were to dislodge one of them, the consequences would be catastrophic to anyone nearby. As I was coordinating mining operations and drafting an unskilled mechanic into the mining operation, another flood struck. We were not so lucky this time, as the worker Aban Lidinsode was claimed by the river currents. However, my improved safety bridges saved the life of a farmer girl and her adorable kitten, who clung to the lower bridge until the flood receded. Cobalt thieves infiltrated the entrance to the fort recently, somehow bypassing the cage traps. Two were ripped apart by dogs and fortress guards, while the last was chased away by a small cat. More invaders. It's good to see our cage traps are still functional. Here they are thwarting a troop of mandrills. I'm a bit worried about the amount of animals we've captured and tamed. Few seem to adopt them, except for the terrifying battle-scarred elephants. The amount of stray animals running through the halls has become a nuisance, but no one seems to have the knowledge or will to geld any of them. I foresee this to be a problem in the future, but I can't bring myself to slaughter any needlessly. I've used some of our steel to create glassworking shops, as well as an additional smelter. This will speed up metal production a great deal. Unfortunately, the preclusive glassworking dwarf has claimed a standard glass furnace. He's not found all that he requires to build. I suspect he's missing a turtle shell, and have asked those at the fishery to start producing fish in case one turns up. I find it hard to believe there are no shells in this entire fortress, so perhaps it's a specific type of rare glass that he seeks. Tosid Zeril Coulette, Tosid Fire Abbey, Craft Dwarf. He's been miserable lately. He likes chalk, pearl, battle axes, idols, and demons for their terrifying features. When possible, he prefers to consume dwarven beer. He absolutely detests bats. He needs alcohol to get through the working day. Eh, all for naught it seems. He's gone insane and wanders the halls, babbling with a depressed look on his face. Perhaps it was for the best, though, as he seemed to have an unhealthy interest in demons and strange idols. Note, he later drowned beneath the main drawbridge entrance. I oversaw a lot of cage management earlier. They're becoming exceedingly full, and the trappers are demanding more empty cages. All stray elephants were transported to a single cage, and animal trainers are working on taming the savage elephants as well as the mandrills. I would like our mandrills to be chained up near sensitive areas as a form of defense. Although they cannot be trained as war mandrills, they surely would attack some invaders and serve as psychological defense to weaken enemy morale. Doran Muralid, mechanic, cancels load cage trap, interrupted by stray elephant. A bunch of other dwarves cancel load cage trap, interrupted by stray elephant. Apparently, two stray elephants, one adult and one calf, were accidentally released and are now interrupting the workers' jobs nearby. The workers seem to be almost as disturbed by the beast as I am, tame or not. At least they've stopped complaining about the lack of traps. I'm unsure how to proceed in this situation. Perhaps it's time for my earlier catapult battery plans. The area they seem to be inhabiting is densely populated, but I'll begin construction of siege parts and observe their movements. On the topic of the main work slash storage area, I must complain about the decision of previous rulers, who placed it out in the open. It is a horribly cluttered mess of barrels and shops, which are all easily immobilized by a single problem, as proven by the stray elephants. As I write, the stray, supposedly tame elephants appear to have struck down a pet war dog who wandered too close. It was probably Ikudolted, or rain-stocked, the rather large and battle-scarred mother of the calf. I only hope that the siege workshop isn't close enough to be interfered with by her, 
although I confess that this place has proven too confusing for me to locate it myself. Whichever elephant was responsible for the earlier carnage, it was the male calf of Ikudultid who just now smote Serol Zenim, another war dog, who although not dead probably has little time left on this earth. His name translates to Helmed Crushed, which is sadly appropriate as he seems to have had his head stomped upon, and he's limping along and passing out frequently. I hope to do something before this elephant gets a name for his infamy. I do not know who started this fight, but it makes no sense either way. If I had a way of finding out who trained these animals, there would be a public flogging. Ikudultid just finished off Serol, but just now I heard word that someone, most likely a war dog, has struck down the elephant calf, which had wandered near the main bridge entrance. While watching this, I witnessed another stray elephant, most likely released from the animal trainer cages, wandering nearby. It did not seem to disturb the dwarves as much as Ikudultid did, and one actually took it by the collar and led it towards the cage where Ikudultid lurks before being scared away. I have a theory that once an elephant tastes dwarf blood, which surely is how this particular creature got her name, they cannot be tamed properly. Once again, a public flogging would be appropriate. The mayor ended his mandate ban on exporting red spinel objects, still a mystery as to why he had it in the first place. Soon he'll probably be mandating something worse. I've ordered the construction of a catapult to the east of Ikudultid, but no one seems to be working on it. Perhaps the parts are stored too close to her, or the workers are incredibly lazy. Summer's ended, and although I've accomplished some of my goals, there's much more to be done. First of Limestone, 1054, Early Autumn. Ikudultid has been a thorn in our sides for much too long. I assigned more war dogs to our small defense force, activated a squad, and stationed them near her. After a few minutes, the warrior Unib appeared on the scene and began bravely striking Ikudultid with her iron sword, gouging out both of the accursed behemoth's eyes. Finally, a fellow dwarf who shares my hatred for this beast. The battle continued, with Unib having sustained only minor wounds to her body from the blind rampaging of the massive elephant. Striking again with her sword, she heavily wounded Ikudultid in the chest. The last moments of the battle were confused, as Ikudultid passed out and was set upon by Unib and the captain of the guard, who has done nothing to help before and was most likely trying to steal her glory. Ikudultid's reign of terror has ended. Unib has been promoted to the leader of her squad in honor of this accomplishment and for her bravery in battle. Hurrah! Unib has been ecstatic lately. She likes granite, ballista parts, and mules for their stubbornness. When possible, she prefers to consume horse and dwarven wine. She absolutely detests rats. She needs alcohol to get through the working day. In other news, a large dwarven caravan has been spotted and is making its way towards us. As I was waiting for them, a kobold showed its marked stupidity by running towards the gate and getting slaughtered by a war dog, a soldier, and a cat. Several dwarves seem to have taken the fool notion that there are supplies far out in the fields, and one of them, a stonemason, has paid the price for it. Rest in peace. Our fortress population is now at 75. I've traded some assorted low-value bone crafts for the exotic and interesting meats the caravan carried. As I know dwarves have favored meals, we may not be able to supply otherwise. Ikudultid's corpse is rotting where it fell. I suppose no one wants to bury or cook it. I noticed that there were many dwarves who were idling about in the hallways, and that all the food we had bought was sitting in the trade depot. When I asked them about it, they said they had been ordered previously not to touch any food, or do any sort of manual transportation. I ordered several to resume these duties, but it may be a problem again in the future. Mechanics seem especially lax. A fisher dwarf nearly starved to death when a tower cap grew and blocked his path, locking him in the mill room. Fortunately, his cries were heard before it was too late, and a dwarf armed with an axe struck the mushroom down. Our mayor has mandated that we make two red spinel items. Perhaps we had none before, so his export ban felt incomplete. A group of frogmen leapt from the river today, killing a war dog and a stray cat. They were quickly struck down by a member of the fortress guard and various peasants. 
The jack of all trades, Os Erdemano, has been possessed by unknown forces and has collected a stockpile of random materials in a craft dwarf workshop. Unfortunately, he's stopped and is muttering to himself. He has one piece of clear glass, so I suspect he requires more, which is a problem as dwarves keep taking our silk bags for other purposes than to transport sand. The dwarf has also organized a party at the sandstone statues, further slowing down our operations. Autumn has ended. First of Moonstone, 1054, Early Winter. Due to laziness and poor time management skills on the part of the work dwarves, the Red Spinel item mandate missed its deadline. The mayor expressed disappointment and enacted a new mandate forbidding the export of jet items. I'm somewhat unsure how to proceed in improving our fort in a functional way. My main effort on this front is the construction of secondary living and dining quarters for dwarves who work on the bank of the magma flow. The slow progress in constructing this area is a constant reminder of how inefficient our metal operations are because of the remote location. Now that drinks and food are provided for the smiths, I would not be surprised if smelting and foraging productivity doubles. I must also build traps near the workshops, as they're too vulnerable now, and occupy what will be some of our most talented and important dwarves. Also due to laziness and poor time management skills on the part of the work dwarves, no clear glass was ever produced, and Os Urdmanel went insane. He started babbling at dwarves nearby, then ran halfway across the bridge, dove into the channel, removed his pants, and went streaking haphazardly across the hallways until he reached his room. He's been locked in to prevent his lack of guard from upsetting the more sensitive lady dwarves. Note, he later died of thirst. For the less functional aspects of the fort, I've begun construction of a complex of large tombs to hold the remains of the previous rulers of this fort. I've given the smaller tomb to Kalo, as he used much of his allotted funds commissioning a statue portrait. Some might say that my own tomb is receiving extra attention, but I believe I'm entitled. And if someone else wanted to build a fancy one for themselves, they should have thought of it when they had the chance. Note, to those who intern me to my casket when I pass into this world, please use the provided chains to tether trained mandrills or a suitable substitute to guard my bones from thieves and vandals. P.S. The last part kind of rhymes. I will have it engraved on the door at once. The long and quiet winter has ended along with my interim reign as ruler of the fort. The magma work area is almost complete for now. All that remains is some stone hauling jobs, resumption of the well construction, assorted additional traps, and the placement of furniture. Here, I take a look at my fellow retired rulers. Tourette Doge Regonib has been ecstatic lately. She likes marble, copper, red diamond, crystal glass, amulets, mules for their stubbornness, and snakemen for their impressive tales. When possible, she prefers to consume turtle and dwarven wine. She absolutely detests bats. She likes working outdoors and grumbles only mildly at inclement weather. Megor Grendel Istenodom has been quite content lately. She likes obsidian, copper, bolts, greaves, gloves, and batmen for their mystery. When possible, she prefers to consume cavefish and cow's milk. She absolutely detests lizards. Kalo Tithlechtkal has been happy lately. She likes limestone, aquamarine, mangrove, clear glass, amber, rings, cats for their aloofness, and werewolves for their howls. When possible, she prefers to consume tiger. She absolutely detests flies. She likes working outdoors, and grumbles only mildly at inclement weather. Locus Oshith Mural has been happy lately. He likes moonstone, iron, adventurine, mangrove, pearl, mules for their stubbornness, and batmen for their mystery. When possible, he prefers to consume dwarven rum and dwarven syrup. He absolutely detests purring maggots. He likes working outdoors, and grumbles only mildly at inclement weather. And here's a map of the fortress. Suggestions for my successor. Smoothing of glass production. There are very bad issues with creating potash container related. Construction of a treasury. As I was leaving, I noticed a pile of minted coins underneath the forge. Clothes purchase or construction. 
Dwarves are beginning to complain of tattered garments. Examination of job permissions. There's some inefficiency.